Well, hello everyone and welcome back to our series of online artist talks where we hope to connect the public to our galleries and our exhibiting artists. I'm Olivia, the arts administrator here at the Pump House and today I'm joined by James Byrne, who's currently exhibiting his series Unforeseen Anomalies, currently on display in our Cotter Gallery, March 1st through April 15th, 2023. In Unforeseen Anomalies, Byrne dives into the land of shadows, shapes, and textures found us in cement and sidewalks right beneath our feet. So join me in welcoming James Byrne, and thank you for joining me today. So, well, you're James, you're yeah, of course, you, and yeah, thank how about we start you. with um, you being, how long have you been focused in art and specifically collage photography? Okay. Well, collage photography has just been in the last three to four years. Uh, I grew up in a small town, Chicago City. Uh, that's uh, about 50 miles north of St. Paul. Then I went to the University of Minnesota and got interested in art and took some fine art photography classes. And that really pushed me forward into, uh, into the art world. I studied with Gary Hallman. And uh, later, I uh, took a workshop at the College of Art and Design. It's a summer workshop in video art. And Peter Campus and Nam June Paik were some of the teachers there. And that really got me interested in video art. I later moved to Chicago and uh, went to the School of the Artist Institute of Chicago, where I got an MFA in video art. And in those years, uh, I started exhibiting my video and my video installations in museums around the country, uh, as well as internationally. And um, I got great support, thank goodness, from uh, foundations like the uh, Bush and McKnight and Jerome Foundation, as well as State Arts Board grants, and that really helped me. Uh, then I moved to New York and got interested in uh, dance video. Uh, and I did collaborative work there with Trisha Brown and Aiko and Coma and Laurie Anderson, to name a few. Uh, after that, I got interested in narrative filmmaking. Uh, moved back to Minnesota and uh, started teaching at Metropolitan State University where I taught screenwriting and film production. And I created, wrote and directed and filmed uh, many short narrative films and two feature films. And after retiring from teaching, I got reinterested in photography. And that's sort of the result is on display now at the Pump House. Okay. And... Um... What brought you back into photography? Like what re-inspired you to move away from film into photography, specifically in this collage type of format that we're seeing here? Well, some of it was practical. Uh, some of it was just a natural movement from one approach, one medium, film, to, from video to film, to from starting with photography, then video, then film, then kind of back to photography. Uh, but this work here is, uh, is unlike my early work, uh, this is much more painterly uh, as opposed to a photograph of something. So I really don't know what changes my interest in the medium and the art form that I'm working in, but it evolves, it just evolves naturally. I like to work with images and uh, I know photography. Uh, my whole life, I guess I've been a camera-based artist. Uh, and the exact uh, why it started up again, uh, it's just a natural progression, no particular thing. All right, well, great. Let's move into some of the pieces that are currently in your show here at the Pump House. Mm -hmm. So this is the first piece that you mentioned you'd like to discuss, Indecision. Um, is there anything specific you'd like to mention about this piece? Well, indecision, yes, of course. It, well, to me, it's very dramatic and theatrical. Uh, these are uh, exaggerated shadows of people passing by while I was photographing sidewalks. And I realized, oh man, these, uh, these shadows are really dramatic. And so I would take, this one is, um, just one photograph, uh, resized and re-scaled uh, and rearranged. And then what I do is draw lines and circles and squares, very simple 
geometric forms on my photographs and use collage technique uh, to create um, what you see here. Great. This was, this was made in Ventura, California. I often take photographs while I'm traveling or when I'm just wandering around my neighborhood. Okay, and what initially drew you to photograph concrete and the land beneath well, our feet that we tend my, to walk to? Yeah, in my wanderings around, <laughs> walking in a lot. I noticed on the sidewalk all these colorful spray painted markings that you know the street crew or construction crew would spray all over the sidewalk. And generally they never dug it up, but it marked, you know, underground cables and lines, I guess. So I started photographing those very, very small and specific. Then I realized, oh, there's all this other things like indecision, these shadows that occur and shapes and textures. And it just allowed me to create uh, several different scenarios of uh, shapes and colors and texture. And uh, so I started exploring and taking pictures uh, of things right down by my feet. Yeah, well, fun. This is um, another piece of yours that is in color. Um, one of my questions is how do you decide if a piece is going to be in color or in black and white? Well, uh, it's, kind of, it's, it's very intuitive. Uh, sometimes it's technical. Sometimes the color of concrete just doesn't work and it looks much better in black and white, especially the more theatrical ones with the human shadows. Those really took off in black and white. Now these, this one right here, Ariel, um, obviously it is a beautiful yellow and bluish color. And that yellow with all the markings there are, is a spray painted markings, the arrow and I don't know, X one, two, seven or something. And uh, so because it was colorful and it looked really nice on the concrete, I took that particular photograph. And then again, using collage technique and drawing lines uh, and simple geometric forms, I created uh, something else. So I like to try to think I make finding, discovering the, the extraordinary in the ordinary. So this is a you know very ordinary thing that people would walk over and not even look at, uh, but I really like finding really simple common things and then through collage and drawing on it, uh, create a whole different sort of thing. And in my photographs, I think I've mentioned before, they, they're painterly as opposed to being a photograph of something. So, and what I mean by painterly, it, it's, it's very frontal. It has to do with light and shapes and color and composition, uh, a lot of things that uh, painting is concerned with. Definitely. Yeah, let's move into this next piece. Um, another question I have is, do most of your pieces just contain one photo that you rearrange and crop in different ways or do you ever use multiple photos in your collages? Uh, they're generally uh, just one photograph. That's not a rule or anything, but it's just, it sort of simplifies everything. Uh, there are some, some of my work that uses multiple photographs, but generally it's just one, maybe two uh, of the same, uh, the same area. So this one, yes, I can tell it's just one photograph. And so you see those arrows and lines repeated and resized uh, and then I drew a couple of squares and other lines and X's. And uh, what, what happens when, I think, when uh, like a circle appears or a perfect square or a straight line, that serves as a, a, something that's counter to the more organic shapes that are there. And it sets up sort of a foreground background uh, uh, dynamic. Which I, which I think enhances the overall composition. Yeah, and um, one thing I've noticed when looking at your pieces in our gallery, and you can see it in this piece, the lines and things that you add on over the photographs, along with the lines that you photograph naturally, um, the way you design them throughout it keeps our eye moving up and around and back around the piece. And it's kind of a never ending, um, journey that you take around the piece, which is really nice. It keeps your eye, especially with this piece with the arrows, it kind of bops your eye all up and around the piece, which is um, 
very enjoyable to look at and keeps it very engaging. Well, thank you. I totally agree. I would hope yeah. that anyone looks at the work, their eyes explore the whole thing and you go up to the right hand corner or down and oh, then something is there. So the more you look at it, hopefully, you know, there's more, there's a reward in, in sticking with it. And I also believe in the, uh, the, the concept that every square inch in a photograph or a painting, any work of art is just as important as every other square inch. So that little corner piece way down or on the edge, the edges are so important, just as important, probably more important than the middle square inch. So that allows a, an overall composition. Hopefully the eye has places to go and it's fun to look at multiple times. Yeah, here is um, one of the pieces that you mentioned, I think right in this, you're combining multiple photographs. Um, yes. Is there anything you'd like to discuss about this piece? Oh, this, this is one of my favorites, uh, Ariel 31. The bright red and the golden leaves and then the, that's actually a color photograph uh, of my shadow and uh, the little lines that I make. So the contrast between the upper portion of the, the brown, oh, I forgot brown. So we got brown, red, gold, white, gray, sort of a bluish black. Uh, there's something about this one that kind of pops. It's very different than the others because I'm combining shadows uh, with uh, non-shadow work. So um, can't really say much more other than uh, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, and next to the other pieces, especially in the gallery, you're right, it, it pops compared to the others, which is yeah. enjoyable to see. And then here's another one of your black and white pieces, Scurry. And Scurry is also another favorite. Um, there's lots going on in this one. And I see this, uh, this figure, probably a woman wearing a long dress or maybe it's a coat. And she really is uh, in the act of scurrying across the street. So this is the same photograph, uh, resized and rearranged. And I just see a lot of movement and fun uh, in this one is there's a lot going on. It's not a simple composition, um, but I like the fact that her dress or her coat and her shoe and her toe, you can see is just almost touching there. Her other leg has sort of disappeared, but she's in the act of moving. And so that's where the, the title Scurry came from. Yeah. and. Um... If people watching this do come to see the work in person, you'll notice that um, all of your photographs are printed on vinyl and are stretched uh, like a canvas is. Um, and most photographs we see framed behind glass and um, are matted and things. Is there a reason why you chose to display your pieces in this way? Oh, uh, part of it is I like to be contrary. And every photograph in the world is like you said, is you know printed on paper and then framed up. So I wanted to make it more of an object uh, and I wanted to make it bigger. So I experimented with aluminum and uh, other materials and canvas and vinyl and fabric. And okay, so then uh, vinyl, uh, really seemed to allow me to make, uh, print out, print the pictures uh, in good quality and have, have it stretched and have a unique surface. I mean, there's not, it's not a clay, it's not a, a photo printed on canvas that you could get at Ikea or someplace like that. It's original, it's interesting, it's unique. Uh, and the vinyl worked out really nice. Yeah, and it's fun to see photos displayed in different ways. So we enjoy having that in our gallery. And then this piece uh, you added to the show Lacrosse. Um, mm. If you wouldn't mind talking about it won an award, didn't it? So if you wouldn't mind well, talking about that, that would be enjoyable to okay, hear. Now, after everything I just said about photographs, <laughs> I do occasionally print my work like a photograph on paper and frame it, which this one uh, lacrosse is uh, printed on photo paper 
and uh, framed very nicely. So lacrosse, I made this, the photograph came from, well, I was visiting lacrosse about two years ago. And there, there's a planter on the riverside there. It's either metal or maybe it's um, ceramic. It's a big flower planter, you know, about three feet tall. And anyway, so you can see the light, uh, the, sun, the sun was coming from the uh, low angle from the side. And so I photographed it and then made this collage and then I drew on it and printed it out as a photograph and then a photo Midwest Biennial, which is in Madison at the Promega Gallery in 2022. And they selected it one out of probably about 30 photographs uh, from artists in the Midwest. Didn't win an award, but it was selected for, uh, for this uh, Biennial, which I was really honored to be in. And then, of course, because it, I did make it in lacrosse, hoping that I would be showing at the Pump House sometime in the future. So two years later, it uh, has, is shown here uh, at the Pump House. So, yeah. But again, and but again, you know, it's not so important that it's a planter somewhere. Uh, hopefully all the work just sort of escapes its original place. And, you know, it's not about, you know, you, okay, you know, it's a sidewalk and someone spray painted marks on it. And, you know, this might be a planter, but that's really not what the work is about. They, the, that's the origin, um, but then it should escape its origin and become something else like this one. You can see there's a lot of texture and a lot of color. And then when the lines are, are drawn on it, uh, it becomes something else. And I also, sometimes I draw lines uh, using my computer, but often, more often than not, I will, once the vinyl is made or the photograph is made, I will then draw lines on uh, in real, you know, over the actual photograph, or I will accentuate the lines that might already be there. So there are lines drawn on it afterwards, as well as during the process. Yeah, well, thank you for explaining your process. And we're happy to have this piece in lacrosse at the Pump House. So thank you for adding it to your show. Um, and then I did pull another one of your pieces from your website. If anyone is interested, is interested, you can head over to James' website. He has some of his other photography work and other things listed there. And we'll put it in the description of this video. Um, but Thank you everyone for listening and you can come and see James's work in person in our Cotter Gallery until April 15th, 2023. Um, and James, is there any last things you would like to say or anything you'd like people to keep in mind when viewing your work in person? Well, uh, just enjoy the show. Enjoy the other artists who are at the Pump House right now and uh, uh, visit visit uh, often and come back, come back to see, see work at the Pump House. All right. I like, I like this piece you picked here. It's uh, Dumbarton Oaks. Oak, Dumbarton Oaks, leaves at Dumbarton Oaks, which is uh, one of my favorite pieces here. You'll see. Anyway, All so right. thanks for choosing that. That's not in the show, but hey, come by and you'll see the other work too. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. It's great to be here. Thank you.